now, we're live. Yes, live from Jay's place, and we're talking barbershop talk. Yes, barbershop talk, where nothing is off limits and everything's on the table. Everything's on the table. Barbershop talk. Barbershop Talk Live here at Jay's Place Barbershop, 1927 Olive Road. Listen, listen, listen. I'm telling you to listen. Today is another day, but today is Wednesday. Not only Wednesday, but it's Barbershop Talk Live Wednesday. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. I'm telling you, thank you for tuning in. Again, there's another special edition of Barbershop Talk Live here at Jay's Place Barbershop, 1927 Olive Road. I got a special guest. I got a special guest. I'm telling you, I got a special guest. But before we get into our special guest, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors, our supporters, and the people that just want to pray for this station and behind the scenes. Special shout out to my good friend, Demetrius Johnson, Beverly's Body Butter. She has mint, tropical peach, island paradise. I'm talking about shea butter to the best, to the finest. Give her a call. You want to get some of those products at 706-564-5335. Again, that's 706 706- Five six four five three three five. Whip Senate Shea Butter, Beverly's Body Butter. I'm telling you, you got a TikTok. She has a TikTok. Hit on TikTok. Melon Queen, nineteen seventy six. Demetrius Johnson, Beverly's Body Butter. Also, don't forget about my good friend Natanya Tillman. She's down at ten twenty eight Broad Street. That's the name of the location, and that's the name of the spot that she's at. Ten twenty eight Broad Street. What I'm telling you, Natanya is doing something big right here in the CSRA. She's putting together a small business summit. She's putting together all kind of black businesses, small business, any kind of business, networking. Natanya Tillman, go see her at 1028 Broad Street. She's looking forward to seeing you. Tell her John from Barbershop Talk Live sent you down there, and she'll give you a big old smile and a big old hug. Also, don't forget about my good friend, Alan Odom. Alan Odom is at Pond Maintenance right here in Augusta, Georgia. Alan does tree removal, demolition, Pond maintenance, and he also cuts your grass. Give him a call at 706-294-8493. Again, at 706-294-8493. Pond maintenance of Augusta. Listen, get in touch with those persons. Get in touch with those vendors. Get in touch with them. Great service. Great service. Also, don't you forget, please, ma'am, please, sir, September the 10th, Barber and Beauty Fun Day. September the 10th, right here in Augusta, Georgia. 2340 Ministry Road. What is the Barber and Beauty Fun Day? I'm glad you asked. Barber and Beauty Fun Day is an event I have put together. Angelic Community Resource Development put this event together. We are doing a competition. I said it. A competition between barbershops, beauty shops, nail salons. We're going to have a three-legged race, potato sack race, horseshoes, musical chairs, vendors, ATL Dream Vision will be the band on stage. DJ J. Will will be the DJ playing the music. I'm talking about a water slide. I'm talking about dunk tanks. I'm talking about fun. I'm talking about fun. I tell you, I'm talking about having some fun. So that's September the 10th, 3 to 7, 2340 Millersville Road, the old YMCA soccer field. Come out to the annual Barber and Beauty Fun Day. Give me a call at 706-726-2711. Again, that's 706-726-2711. If you want to be a vendor, if you want to be a vendor or if you want to sign up your barbershop, your beauty shop, or your nail salon, you have time. Get your people ready. September the 10th, 2340 Millersville Road, Barber and Beauty, fun day. Let's have some fun. But right now, listen, you know what the day is. You know what the day is. The day is Wednesday. Barbershop Talk Live time. But listen, I got a special guest. Without further ado, I want to bring your attention to my special guest. She came all the way from doggone downtown Laney Walker. <laughs> 
She drove far from Ball Gone Downtown Lady Walker to tell us about what's on her mind, what's on her heart, dealing with the CSRA in Richmond County. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Miss Lisa Ann Wheeler. Hey, Liz. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you. Good, good to, to see you. you good too. to see you. Now, listen, I don't know if you had a chance to watch Bobby Shop Talk Live. I have not. Well, listen, I'm glad you have not because you are in store for a lot. And what I say in store for a lot to means that this is a fun, energetic, different show. Some people call it a podcast. I call it a conversation. Okay. So we're just going to have a conversation. Sure. We're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. So that being said, and you you just told me that you haven't had a chance to watch it, which is good and it's good and it's bad. But I'm glad you had a chance to well, come. Hopefully more good than bad. Hopefully more good than bad. <laughs> I'm glad you had a chance to take time out your crazy busy schedule to come sit in the hot seat. This is what I call the hot yeah, seat. I know you said that. This mm -hmm. is the hot seat, Lisa. Mm -hmm. So listen, now, again, I had a chance to talk to you off camera, had a chance to kind of pick your brain. You pick my brain. We see where we're coming from, what we like, what we don't like. So I kind of know a little bit about you already. But also I had a chance to Google you. Oh. I did some oh. Googling. I Googled. Thank God for Mr. Google. So I did some Googling, and I found out a little bit more about you. Okay. But for the people that don't know nothing about you, I want you to look into that camera, Miss Lisa Ann, mm -hmm. and tell the people of the Barbershop Talk Live world, who are you? Okay. So my name is Lisa Ann Wheeler. I am the patient navigator with the Breast and Cervical Cancer Screening Program with the Georgia Department of Public Health. This program is absolutely amazing. We provide comprehensive wellness care for women who are uninsured, underinsured, and low income at no cost, as long as they qualify. Okay. All right. So that's Lisa Ann. A portion of Lisa Ann. A pro well, let's get us the other portion. Are you from Augusta? I'm not. Where are you from? Maine. Don't Maine. hold that against me. Maine. <laughs> you came a long way. Mm -hmm. You're like, what? What are you doing here? Yeah. My, I didn't know that you're from Maine. I didn't, I yeah. didn't Google that part. I have a funny story. Okay, let's So I, when I first moved down here, which was a few years ago, I was in Dollar Tree because that's where I buy all my Hallmark cards. Best ever. Okay. And there's a woman behind me, and she's like, you're not from here, are you? I was like, well, first of all, I don't have my Southern accent. I'm like, no, I'm not. I said, I've only been here for a couple of weeks. And she said, oh, you're going to hate it down here. She said, red ants, and it's hot all year. And I thought, really? <laughs> that's what okay. the introduction I got? Yes. And I went home to my son, and I'm like, I hope we move to the right place. We love it here. Like, yeah, is it warm in the summer? But yeah, of course it is. Uh, that's that's the South. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the South. That's different from Maine. A whole Very, lot oh, different. No, it never gets hot like this. You know, this is this is called sticky hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sticky. Now, you know, again, as as we was talking off camera, uh, you told me about your husband. Mm -hmm. And what what is his name? Scott. You told me about Scott. I, I wanted to make sure I didn't call the wrong name. You did tell me about Scott. And you told me that when you leave here. Scott is also preparing dinner. Absolutely. Scott is preparing dinner. Now, now, Lisa, sometimes I, I kind of surprise the guests with some stuff, and sometimes I don't surprise the guests with stuff. But in this situation, this being your first time on Barbershop Talk Live, I'm going to give you a surprise. Okay. That's Scott be, here? Well, Scott is here. <laughs> and, and if you didn't know, he's, he's not cooking, but he's here. So come on in, Scott. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'd I, I, I love to see him, but I want that dinner ready, man. <laughs> I just messed with you. <laughs> Scott, you better be home cooking right about now. <laughs> you better be cooking them sausages and all that stuff right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Keep it high, Scott. A shade, bit disappointed there. Yeah, I mean, happy better. to see him, but like, whoa. <laughs> he better be cooking. But listen, um, now give us a little, a little background on, on your, your journey to where you're at now for us, because you're in the medical field. Yes. So tell us, how did you get into that field for us, for us education-wise? So I'm actually going to backtrack just a little bit. I shared okay. with you about my mom. So to, focusing on where I am right now, um, I live her legacy. I lost my mother to metastatic breast cancer. It was a, a heinous death that uh, I don't want another woman to go through. So what I do every day is I am out there trying to make sure women get in for their mammograms, get in for their health care, so that, that they're not facing that road that she went down. You know, and I said to you, there is not a person that I meet that is not affected by a cancer diagnosis. Whether it's a friend, family member, coworker, it is everywhere. Now, now again, we, we are talking about the breast cancer. So, uh, as you said earlier, breast cancer, I didn't realize the magnitude that is that is has taken the lives of the of the people. So when you when you say breast cancer, that's that's a scary word. Oh, it, it, very That's scary. Very One scary. One in eight Georgian women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. 
women of color, number one, and I'm going to use the word killer of women of color in this area. That's scary. And there's reasons for that. Lack of insurance, number one, lack of transportation to get to the health care that you need. It's something that I'm facing all the time, trying to make sure that women are getting to their mammograms. And, and I have um, the transportation too. So if you live in the Richmond County area and you are able to come into my, under my program, I can get you from your house to the health department. I can get you from your house to your mammogram. There's no reason that a woman is not getting their mammograms right now. CSRA, if you have a question for my special guest, Miss Lisa Ann William Willer, or a special guest, or a, a question for myself, John Milton, please, ma'am, please, sir, put the question on the screen. We'll make sure we answer any and all questions. No question is off limits. A uh, special guest, again, from the Department of Public Health, Lisa Ann Wheeler, and she's here as, as a breast care specialist. She has all the information about breast cancer, the information that you would definitely need for your family, neighbors, church members, maybe your enemies. <laughs> Could be. Could be. So let me ask you. Love your enemies as yourself. Love your enemies as yourself. So I want to go back and, and kind of catch up a, little, a few things. So it doesn't always seem all the time that we see people just get into the to the health field. Now, when you get into the health field, is it because uh, a family member was in it or, or are you just looking for a job? Or how did you actually get into the health field to, to this point where you're at now? Because you just have a passion for that, that type of environment? Right. Yeah. The, okay. the passion, yes. So uh, out of college, I uh, majored in oncologic nursing. So I was actually treating cancer patients. And it just fostered from there. Uh, my mother was diagnosed. And I don't know, so many family I've lost so many family members to cancer that it's just something that I feel so passionate about because there are things you can do. You know, we do not need to sit back and wait for a cancer diagnosis. There are things we can do. And we touched on this with the nonprofit that I have, Reduce Your Risk. We're working on preventing breast cancer. No one talks about prevention ever. There are things you can do. And we talk about um, recurrence, um, preventing recurrence of breast cancer. So it's NESS, N-E-S-S, -S, nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress reduction. Very important. They all go together. And Carolyn um, Bird and Angela Prince, who are my partners in Reduce Your Risk, they're both breast cancer survivors. Their stories are, oh, their testimonies are so impactful. But they both said that they believe their cancers were caused by stress. People discount it. It's true. You know, that inflammation in your body. You know, um, a few weeks ago, I had, a, I had another special guest that was straight here in this hot seat. His name is Bernard Gracie. And Bernard, he's a fitness expert. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about um, different ways of, of your eating habits, uh, exercising, uh, as you say, stress relievers, stuff like that. So... We come to we come to the conclusion that a lot of the different diseases that we have is from the food that you eat. So he was concentrating on uh, the blood type, eating right for your blood type. What, I have heard of that. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a good book. Eat right for your blood type. So whatever your blood type is, that's those are foods you should or should not be eating. So I didn't I didn't realize that until we had the conversation about that. So my question is to you: uh, Is somewhat of the, the the cancer breast cancer could it come from the eating? The diet. Oh, absolutely, and that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so nutrition. 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 And unfortunately, where we are here in the CSRA in Richmond County, especially, well, and and, and my more de um, uh, rural counties too, food deserts, food swamps. Food swamps are a little bit different than food deserts. It means you, all you have is your Dollar Tree. That's you know, no fruits, no fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. Those are the things we need to be eating. Living things. We're living bodies. So if that being said, Lisa, if we are in a food desert and that can, can potentially cause the diseases because we're not getting the right foods in our bodies to nutritionalize our bodies, what 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 can we do to, to offset that? When it, so when I say offset it, let's say maybe get into the commission chambers, talk to the, the leaders of the city to put the, the necessary supermarkets or grocery stores in the areas where we can alleviate the food deserts. Is that is that that's doable? Oh, yeah, and, and a lot of people are working on that, a lot of people, along with Reduce Your Risk. We are concentrating on tower gardens. Have you ever heard of tower gardens before? Never heard of tower gardens. Yeah, so it, no soil. It's in a, a, a plastic like stand, I guess you could say, and you can grow all sorts of things, spinach, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, all those things, and it doesn't require very, very little maintenance. So we are actually just applied for a grant. Oh, praise Jesus, I hope we get it, um, to put these tower gardens in different areas throughout the cities. 
Um, could it be maybe the health department? Could it be a school? Because if you involve children in something like that, they're more apt to eat it. You involve them in the, the, the process of growing vegetables, they're like, oh, you know, I had a hand in this. I pro this will probably be pretty yummy. Tower Garden. Tower Gardens. Okay, mm -hmm. and this this is an actual one stand or it's multiple stands? It would, I mean, one stand. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's different. Mm -hmm. That's different. I hope you get the grant. I know, me I too. Hope you get the grant. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm praying for the grant. The, matter of fact, when I think about praying, I'm thinking about the, you told me something earlier off camera that you are a pastor. You are, I you, am. I'm a reverend. You are a reverend. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what the reverend looked like, but I wouldn't have put you as a reverend. <laughs> I hear that all the time. I would have never known yeah. this. So let me ask you, going, going on the, 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 the spiritual side. So now that we're dealing with breast cancer and all that comes along with breast cancer, what is, in your opinion, by you being a reverend, mm -hmm. what is the spiritual side of, a, of the breast cancer? How would the spiritual side of breast cancer kind of correlate? You, you kind of follow my question? I do. I do follow your question. And this is something that I have, um, when I have a, a spiritual conversation with all sorts of people. A lot, a lot of times with my patients, once they identify that they're spiritual, we'll have a conversation. But I always say, they're like, why did this happen? Why did this happen? And I always say, God's ways are not our ways. They just are not. We will never understand them. And I have an honest to goodness pile of things I just don't get. And hopefully, hopefully, where I'm going, Good I'll get an answer to a Good few answer. things. Good. I'm hoping like when I get to heaven, he's like, oh, you, you're the one that caused me all that grief down there. But yeah, so that, I mean, that it's true. I mean, we all go through our trials and tribulations, but that faith, that faith just holds us up. And the grace that God gives us every single day to face that day, you know, I'm going to get on a soapbox a little bit Come because on, I feel like box. this is so true. We, we are you know, <laughs> it's an intention every day. Do I get up in the morning like snapping and dancing and singing around? Sometimes, but not all the time. And it's like, it's an intention that I have that I'm going to have a great day. I focus on that. We all can do that. It takes a little practice. It doesn't happen overnight. But if you focus on the gratitude and you focus on the fact that I'm going to have a great day no matter what. And if people want to throw their garbage at me, I'm keeping my lid shut. I'm not okay, letting it in. Okay, okay. I'm just going to continue having a good day. And you'll be surprised how that changes your outlook. It does. Does it mean everything's perfect? No. But you can be just enjoy those 24 hours denied to many. Now, now you have made me go into my, my thinking closet. Mm -hmm. So now I'm thinking about what you just said. And I'm also thinking about what I do every, every now and then. And what I do every now and then is called the word for today. I post it on my Facebook page and I give people something to think about. So now that you brought that to my attention, and now I just went into my, my thought process and I'm thinking about three words. Three words I want, to, want you to think about and you tell me what those three words mean to you. The first word is time. The second word is motivated. The third word is patience. So what do those three words mean to you? Oh, and I'll, now, now keep in mind now, Lisa, all this going side with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Time, motivated, and patience. What those three words mean to you? Okay, so time, time, we all want more time. And I think about so many patients that I've lost, family members I've lost, I would give anything for more time with them. That's just what pops into my head. Motivation, my motivation for what I do, my mom. I live her legacy. What was the last one? Patience. Patience, oh, patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. Patience, patience. I work on it all the time. I can tend to be impatient when I'm waiting for someone to get back to me. Do you ever feel that way? I do feel that like, way. Like, oh, I put something out there like, please get on back to me. So I, I have to work on that, but I'm getting better at it. I, I, I do that also. I, I'm, I'm one of those, you ain't calling me? What happened? What? I'm, so I'm with that too also. So I, I, I feel you. So CSRA, if you have a question for our special guest, Ms. Lisa Ann Wheeler, please, ma'am, please, sir, put the question on the screen. You have a question for myself, put the question on the screen. We'll answer any and all questions. Remember, no question is off limits, none. So keep on subscribing to Barbershop Talk Live, Facebook page, Barbershop Talk Live, YouTube page, Barbershop Talk Live, my personal page. If you would like to be a guest right here in the hot seat, you inbox me. We'll make sure you be a guest on Barbershop Talk Live. I think we have a question from the floor. No question from the floor? Okay, we're going to keep on with the conversation. Ms. Wheeler, when you're talking about breast cancer, that is, a, again, as I said earlier, a scary word. Very scary. scary word. Well, matter of fact, the word cancer is a scary word. So I have noticed over the past few years that 
Breast cancer also affects men. It does. Forty over forty five hundred men are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. So I, I mean that's kind of kind of surprising because you, you always hear about the women. So now Absolutely. So can you also put that in somewhat of the diets of the men or is that hereditary of the men? Is that something how what is the what is the process of the men? Because we're trying to figure this part out because again it's I'm just not hearing about the men. Right. And we're trying to figure that out. So it tends to be, and I don't want to misspeak, but a, a hereditary situation that I've seen. Maybe a family member, mother, aunt, so forth. That's what I've seen in the men that I've known that have been diagnosed. Does that mean that because your mother had breast cancer, you're going to have breast cancer if you're a male? Not at all. But that's what I have seen. Could it be um, dietary? Sure. Why not? You know that talk about nests, n nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress reduction. All of those things come into play for any type of inflammation that we have in our body. Okay. Now, what is the what is the when I asked, when I asked the question, what is the the emotional side of breast cancer? And then I know I know it's again as you hear the word cancer, that's 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 just you know put your mind in a different space. But what is the emotional side of breast cancer for the persons that's um, helping the person, um, you know, sitting out to that person. So is it is it too emotional? You know, when I ask that question, when I say the emotional side, when you have to deal with a patient, is that is it to the norm where, okay, I've been doing this all while, it's nothing more, or is, can you kind of elaborate on the emotional side of, of taking care of breast cancer patient? Oh, absolutely. So um, I shared with you that I took care of my mom. I shared with you all that I lost her. I was her primary caregiver, and... Um, it will never be lost on me. I can't, breast cancer diagnosis will never, ever be lost on me. Every woman is different. Every diagnosis is different. Um, how they're diagnosed, it, is it, is it um, a, a, you know, stage one or is it stage four? You know, the, all of those things come into play. And I will say, backing up just a hair, when you talk about it, it's just really scary even to go through, for some women to go through their mammogram. I'm not even talking about a diagnosis. I've had women in my office that literally don't want to go for a mammogram because they're terrified of number one, the unknown, and number two, the pain factor. So let's address the pain factor. Mammograms are not painful. Are they uncomfortable? Yes. Is it momentary? Yes. Is it well worth it? Yes. So important. I have had women whose mothers have said, uh, oh, don't, you don't go for a mammogram. It's, it's way too painful. I'm like, mm -mm -mm. so I have a story. I actually, one of my patients, I went with Angela Prince, my cohort and reduce your risk. We went with her to her mammogram because she was terrified. So we were there and she comes out and she's like, oh, that was nothing. I was like, oh, and actually um, I brought her on the morning mix to, to okay. share her side of that. Six, like she, yeah. okay. and it's like, she's like, it really wasn't that bad. And good golly, I wish I hadn't been so fearful. That's something that, uh, that's a barrier. That's another barrier there. So there are these barriers that we just need to break down, access, fear, you know, all of those things to get women to take care of themselves. And we as women always put ourselves last. We're always way down on the chain. That needs to change too. You know, let me ask you now, as you said about the barriers, I thought about a barrier that the, that the world dealt with a few, a few years ago, the pandemic, the yeah. COVID. So... Most of the time, if I'm not mistaken, um, the breast cancer you have to come in and, and, and get your get your test done and stuff like that, and just to see how you are progressing in in the, in the treatment. So during the pandemic, there wasn't a lot, a lot going on, no coming into the office, none of that kind of stuff. So how did the pandemic affect the breast cancer patients for us getting to the doctor's office, getting the regular checkups and stuff like that? So well, there's a, a major hindrance into that. Oh Lord, and let's go back. I'm talking about screenings. Okay. Women okay. did not get their screenings. So now today. We are seeing women who have not had a mammogram for two or three years, and we are seeing women that are being diagnosed because they did not have their mammograms for two or three years. That's horrible. I mean, and, and the thing is, no fault to themselves. You know, I mean, the, the access was limited. So, um, yes, and I just actually had um, a few women diagnosed a couple weeks ago that just, there, there was just, they, it's just too bad that they hadn't gotten their mammograms. Let's just put it that way. You know, and if they had, it probably wouldn't have been it has, as far a stage as it was with a diagnosis. Okay. I think we got a question from the floor. I think it's more of a um, question is 
like when you when you guys diagnose all these people with breast cancer and and they come in with high hopes and high wishes, do you guys need um, counseling? Do y'all get counseling? Do the caregiver get counseling? Because that's a, that sounds that's very emotional, that's right. stressful. Right. Right. right, man. Right, yeah. So uh, I shared this. You with know, you. I can see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was I was in those shoes. I was my mom's caregiver. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it is not easy. So another part of Reduce Your Risk, we have a cancer support group the third Monday of every month at the Elks Lodge here in Augusta, and we provide dinner and um, a speaker. Could be lots of different speakers. Never know what we're going to do, and um, we include the caregivers. Most support groups don't. And that's such a big part of it. And we had one gentleman that came who was talking about his wife was the one who was receiving treatment, but he needed help too. He was just tired, worn down, just needed someone to say, hey, I get you, buddy. I, I've, I've been in those shoes. I know. And I just shared a couple of tips with, you know, just honestly taking time for yourself, whether it's five minutes, five minutes just to decompress, Maybe just a med little meditation. doesn't need to be anything fancy, but you've got to take that time for yourself. Hugely important. And if anyone is in need of a, a cancer support group, it's all cancers, not just breast cancer. We, we, we welcome everyone. We welcome caregivers. We welcome friends, family. Just come along. It's a, a wonderful dinner. It's a wonderful time to just share our, our stories. And if you don't want to share, if you just want to sit there and have dinner with us and, and watch the, the presenter, that's great too. We'd love to have you. Yes. Yeah. So listen to message. Um, the breast cancer, as you say, in breast cancer, is that something that you can just look at it, or is when you has when you say the screening, how is that a self screening, or you have to come into the office to get screened? Okay, so you come into the health department for a comprehensive wellness exam. If you need your Pap and HPV, we do that too, and then we do a referral for a mammogram. We do a clinical breast exam in the office, and then we send our patients for a mammogram. Okay. So so am I am I. When you say mammogram, that's that's when you self check yourself. No, mammogram is actually a procedure. It's okay. the compression of the breast, and they take a, an actual photo of the breast. Okay, okay, all right. So I know I've seen some videos where they, you raise your arm and you can kind of, oh. you know, self self examine okay. yourself. Okay. So breast self exams. Okay. Now we're going to go down a different road altogether. Okay. 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 Know your lemons. Know your lemons. Have you ever heard of it? I haven't heard of it. Know your lemons. Have you heard of it? Have you seen it out and about, the 12 it. signs of breast cancer? Okay. Okay. So there are 12 signs of breast cancer. Okay. Women are only taught alone. 11 other signs. And Angela, my partner, she had seven signs, but she didn't have a lump. So she didn't think she had breast cancer. And there's things we can explain away. A chafe from a bra, an indent from a bra. We, women are awesome at explaining stuff away. We do it all the time. So it's like, okay. yeah, it's, it's true. But there are 12 signs of breast cancer. So our job is to, my job and through Reduce Your Risk, is to get those 12 signs of breast cancer out there and to encourage stress. Please do your breast self-exams. If you don't know how to do one, call me. I'll get you the information. It's crucial. If you know the lay of the land, you know if something comes about that shouldn't be there. So as, as It's life-saving. Now, as you say call you, what, how can we get in contact with you? 706-513-1033. That's the Department of Public Health. Yep. That's right here. In the, I'm right the here. patient navigator for the Breast and Cervical Cancer Screening Program. You can always call me. That's my cell phone number. I can give you my office number, 706-667-4255. And it's the Lane Walker office? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I would cover 13 counties okay. in the East Central Health District. My office, where I sit sometimes, is on Laney Walker. Okay. Let me ask you this now. The, the treatment of breast cancer is grueling. The, 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 you know, the, the support is grueling. So out of all that being said, what is what is what is your joyful side of what is, what is the joy that you get out of doing your job? So there's a couple joyful well, there's a million joyful sides, okay. but let's just okay. let's just go with this. When I see a woman going through the process of her screenings and coming out the other side with a clear mammogram, that's awesome. Now the women that are diagnosed with breast cancer, I'm with them as best as I can be to to support them. And I really feel the number one thing for women going through a breast cancer diagnosis is support. Family, friends, coworkers, if that be the case, hugely important to depend upon those people for, and, but then of course we come around to the caregivers needing their help too. But um, it's so important, women that have to do it alone, that's not easy, it just isn't. 
it's just as simple as someone fixing a dinner. I mean, we're joking about my husband fixing his dinner. But no, if you're going through chemo and you're not feeling well and someone whips up a soup for you or something like that, or takes you to treatment, that's hugely important. And those are the little bits of joy. And that's something, you know, I, I have to go to a, a, an awesome article that I read about um, a survivor in Auschwitz. Now, if you think about that, where's the joy? Where is the joy? And he said, I find joy every day in the fact that I can take a breath in my lungs and blow it out. Think about that. That's gratitude. So I think when you're in those situations, and I'm sure you've been in them, I've been in them, when the going gets tough, we have to search for the joy. And it's usually there. It might be tiny, but it's usually there. I had to listen to that, and I took that in because when you talk about the – the, the type of job that you do, you have to find a, a comfort zone. You have to find a joy into that because it's 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 long hours. It's, it's you suffering when they suffer. You oh, happy, oh, totally. You oh, happy absolutely. when they're happy. Mm -hmm. You 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 emotional, they emotional. So you kind of you know you kind of feed off each other. So I, I understand what you're saying by that. So now at, at at your church, is there some type of outreach at your church that's also provided, or just mainly at your job? Do y'all do anything at, the, at your church with at them? my church? No. So I, when I was in uh, seminary, I interned at Red Branch Baptist Church. Love my bread finch back to just church family. It's a mouthful. I love them. And they they haven't they haven't gotten rid of me yet. I'm like a bad penny, just keep hanging around. But we don't we don't have outreach like that. I just I do a couple of different things with the children's ministry. Um Red McWhite's amazing. He just he gives me these things that to do and he just yeah, I love it. I love it there. But we don't do specific outreach. But I will say we did do our program um in October at Red's Branch Baptist Church for um, breast cancer awareness and I had the know your lemons information there and all that. So that was really cool. Okay, so any any um, when you talk about a breast cancer, also what are the different stages of it? Is it is it like I think it's so many different. There's stages. four stages. There's four stages. Okay, okay so tell first us about the four stages. stages. Would be the most localized. Two, a little bit more disseminated. Three, a little bit more disseminated, and four, it has spread outside, meaning metastasis to lung or bone or brain. So I have to talk about Angela. Angela Prince. She, I told you that she had seven signs, so forth and so on. When she was diagnosed, it had already spread to her lung. Mm -hmm. She went through two grueling years of chemo, and she is awesome now. She is doing great, doing great. And Carolyn's 13 years out. She was stage three. So I don't want to sound too graphic, Lisa. So when you, when they, you hear about the women getting their breasts removed. Mm -hmm. Mastectomy? That's, the, that's the, the stage four? Oh, no. You can have a mastectomy at stage one. I mean, one. that's a decision that you make with your own, your oncologist. Okay, so that's not a, that's not to the point where the doctor just said we got to remove them. That's that's, the, that's a decision on your own. That that's an option. Okay, it's an option depending upon the grade of tumor, and there's a lot of other factors that go into. it. So I don't want to get too weighty, but um, no, and that's not just for stage four. No. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. I can see that. I didn't know that. Yeah, no. Not, not. Something just. Oh, I was going to tell you something. that just flew out of my head. Maybe I'll come back. Well, it, as we live, and please, man, see, please, sir, if you have a question for our special guest, Miss Lisa Ann Whelan, answer, we answer any and all questions. Put this question on the screen. You have a question for myself. Put the question on the screen. I will answer any and all questions. We say no question is off limits. Do we have a question from the floor? No question from the floor. So, Lisa, what I want to do now, they're listening. I want to make sure that you, all the information that you can give the folks, get the people to know where to come to get the mammogram. Mm -hmm to get testing, to get screening, uh, if there's any, any websites you got, any, any matter of fact, is there any upcoming events? So yes, we have, um, so Reduce Your Risk has our signature event, super, super fun. It's called Le Sundresses and Lemonades. It's on July 22nd from three to five at The Hub. Have you ever been to The Hub? The Hub is in uh, Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you yes. been there? I haven't been there yet, but oh. I, heard, I heard about it. Fabulous, beautiful. So Poncier is our MC. Do you know Poncier? I know Hello. Poncier. <laughs> Miss Ponce here. Daniels, you are the just the bomb yeah, diggity. We, we love you. That's my cousin. Yeah. R for real? That's do you know what she's from? For real? She's your cousin? Well, we we'll play cousins. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's from thing. my hometown area, so I <laughs> <laughs> she, she's, well, yeah, good she's our MC. Good people. And um oh Cassandra. Cassandra darling, I can't think of your last name. That's just horrible. But she's our chef. We're gonna have, we have a, a fashion show, the sun a sun hat contest. Um it's gonna be amazing. Super, super fun. And tickets are $10. $10 for tickets. Yeah, $10 when, for when tickets. When is it again? It's on July 22nd. July 22nd. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a website they can buy tickets. Yeah, you can go to Reduce Your Risk Inc. on Facebook and see us. Okay. Yep. And Ponce will be on be the host. Yeah, she's our host. 
She's she's the bomb. She's crazy. Yep. She's she's energetic and I I love her energy. Oh, I love her. So, she's amazing. So peace, ma'am, please, sir. Don't forget about July the twenty second. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's gonna be at the hub. At the hub. Okay. And if you need any more tickets, if you need to bring some friends with you, you can also go to the website and also the phone number is. Well, you can just call me. Just call. Seven zero six five one three one zero three three. I do it all. I can answer anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we got. Uh, yes, yeah, you've got it. Seven zero six. Five one three one zero three three. Lisa Ann Wheeler, I'm telling you, listen, um, what I want to make sure CSRA, the, the serious moment about the breast cancer is I didn't realize that it's, it's prominent more in the black community. Oh, absolutely. Women so, of color are being diagnosed later stage and with triple negative breast cancer, which is a kind of breast cancer that's just very nasty. We'll put it that way. So now you, talk, you touched earlier about um, the cost of it. And when I say the cost, I mean the insurance side of it. So um, when when a person is diagnosed with the with the cancer, and insurance doesn't cover a lot of the treatment, is there any other ways of the of the person getting their getting their health being you know taken care of financial wise? Okay, so my program is for women, as I sh- shared with you, uninsured, underinsured. If a woman comes through my program and she's diagnosed with breast cancer, we put her on women's health Medicaid, and they pay for her treatment. Okay, so that's based based on the income. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is. Okay. It is. Now, right. talking about that, based on income and so forth. So, this is something that is so doggone true. A woman could care less about a mammogram if she can't put food on her table. If her light bill isn't paid, if her rent's not paid, if she doesn't have clothing, all of these things. So, I can't. I don't just like look at the woman and like, okay, we need to get your mammogram done. Let's talk about the whole thing. Let's see what's go- what is going on and how can I help. And literally, I have had rents paid, light bills paid, beds delivered. I've delivered food. I've delivered clothing. There are so many needs that need to be met before you can get to the point where a woman's like, okay, I'm ready to have a mammogram now. And I get that. I totally get that. And I have just phenomenal resources in this area. Phenomenal resources. We talked about Bishop Green. Yeah, I called him up. I said, I have a patient that is food insecure. Can you help me? Head on over, open up the back of the Jeep, build the back of the Jeep, and make a delivery. That's Bishop. Yeah. That's oh, it. absolutely. That's we got, and I always say, we got to love each other. What What happened? What happened that we're not loving each other like we should? I, I couldn't even This is it. my soapbox right there. Get on your soapbox. Lord. Look, <laughs> perfect example. Today we had at the Department of Public Health, we have diaper day every other month. Amero Group, Nardia, amazing. Uh, so we provide diapers, wipes, and baby products. It could be clothing or whatever, right? So it was today, from 1 to 2. People were lined up at 12 o'clock. See the need I'm talking about here? We served 100 families. Now, that's just a little snapshot. There is need, and we're not meeting it. And there are a lot of people around that have a lot of money, that could do a lot of good. Anybody agree with me there? I agree with you. 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 So let me ask you this. Um, when you're talking about the needs, Check. and and right now, right here in the CSRA, there's a great need. And the, the need that I'm referring to is the homeless. We have a lot of homeless people right here in the CSRA from all parts of the area from like say the Harrisburg area to the Riceboro area, a lot of a lot of areas is homeless. Uh, so now that being said, and you in the breast cancer field, so is there some kind of way that maybe you all or whoever goes out to to to, to get to the homeless part of the, the population to, to do the mammogram, to do the breast cancer checks, to see if some of the homeless are being affected by the breast check, cancer? Check, check. I do all this. Okay. Because I'm on the was, homeless task force. All right, there you go. Yep. So give us yes. give us tell so, us about that. Yeah. So I'm on the homeless task force, which is we're really trying to make a, a lot of headway here. Um actually I'll back up to this. This is so amazing. When we're at our last meeting, we're going to actually have water stations that we're coming out with. So throughout the city. So there'll be places that people could get a water bottle. And you know where this came from? Randy Bars, Randy, I'm calling you out here, hon. But so he uh, made an announcement that about this this cooling station that we're going to cooling stations that we're going to do, meaning water available. He said he was at some restaurant, I'm not going to name it, and um, he was ordering his food, and this guy came in and said, "Can I have a glass of water? Can I have a cup of water?" And the guy said, "That'll be a dollar fifty. 
And Randy's like, what is that? What? Like, what? He obviously did not have the $1.50 to pay. What? Just water, water, especially when it's so hot out. Lord. So that's something that came from that. Um, and I always attend, so the uh, Salvation Army on Green Street has the last Friday of every month. It's um, like their um, give back to society event, okay? They have a certain name for it. It's not coming to me. But anyway, two to four, all of these different resources are there. And that's where I meet a lot of the patients that are in need, or I shouldn't say patients, people, and then they become my patients that are in need of their screenings, which works great because I can help them get their screenings. I have the transportation to get them to and from, because of course that's an, an issue if you're staying at the shelter, you know? And um, yeah, the homeless situation is something. Oh, and that a lot, oh, I'm gonna go on something else. You're only so so well. Project Refresh, do you know? I never heard of it before. <gasps> Project Refresh, y'all, Project Refresh is amazing. Portable showers, hello, incredible. So I do it free or not, right? They're, I, I partnered with them and they're coming to the health department on July 31st. Okay. Yes, okay. from 9 to 12, so be aware of that. We'll be there from 9 to 12. We'll have showers. We'll have clean clothing. We ha I have a local church that's going to provide a yummy, delicious meal, so we'll have food. Hopefully, cross my fingers, haircuts. Cross your fingers. Yes, I, I reached out fingers. to Aiken Tech. Okay. <laughs> so for, I wasn't asking you, no. I reached out to Aiken Tech, <laughs> and hopefully someone's going to be doing ha um, haircuts, and then Sam's is going to bring muffins. Isn't that awesome outreach? You That's know, what I'm talking about, loving each other. Loving each other. you got to think about each other. It's the only way anything is ever going to change. And, and that goes by what you said earlier. What happened? I don't, yeah. What, what happened? happened? What happened to the, to the love? What happened to the togetherness? What happened to looking out for each other, mm -hmm. supporting each other? What happened? And, and that being said, Lisa, um, I want to go into a, a, a quick try to figure out all that you are doing with the Department of Public Health what is all up under the umbrella? Because we know about the, the you know, like I say, we know the breast cancer. What else kind of services did you all provide? Oh Lord, we provide so many. We provide immunizations. I, I, know, I know you're a preacher, but you know, don't be long-winded. <laughs> I'll try not to be. So immunizations. Okay, obviously women's health. Right. right immunizations, right. birth control, very important. People don't know that. We have TB. We have um, the Ease program, which is for expectant moms. You can call me if you have any questions about any of these. Uh, we have child car seats. Do you know that we provide child car seats? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm, we do that. We have an opioid department, Narcan. We do that too. Mosquito control, of course, we have that. I mean, there is a lot. We do a lot here at the health department. I didn't Truly, know that. I didn't we know do. That. I There's did so not much. Know that. Now, if you watch um, the morning mix, not to give a nod to that, but every Thursday morning, I'm on there at nine o'clock with a different department, so you can find out about what we're doing. I and you can know. call me and see if there's something that you're looking for that maybe I might be able to help you. Okay, okay. Well, do do y'all um, do y'all do like fans go with fans and stuff for the heat? For we Peter? do not, but I have a contact for that. Cool. I know a lot of folks want to get that. I know a couple of places were collecting fans. You know who was collecting fans was WAFJ was doing a fan collection. I think was it AFJ? WJBF was, was too. Oh, were they? Six, yeah. 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 I I'm really to the point where I'm getting a, and you know overwhelmed with all the information that you're giving us which is good information good information because a lot of the information i didn't know for us the the different departments that you have at the health department so is it department of public health mm -hmm. so what is the hours so monday through friday eight to five we do have some i wish i had the flyer with me because i can't remember off the top of my head but we have for um getting kids ready for back to school because of course you have to be up to date on the immunizations you need to do the hearing vision dental screenings very very important we have two Saturdays. Um, if you just just call me, I can give you that information. I know one is August 12th, and I believe the other one is July 29th. July 29th and August 12th, Saturday hours, um, just to help parents be able to get their kids ready for back to school. It's right around the corner. Okay, now do y'all do uh, a lot of on-site visits also as we're talking about the schools? So is, is there any other things that you do outside the office? Uh, we do a lot of health fairs. You mean okay. like attending health fairs? Yes. Yes. Okay. So a lot of uh, so I have three coming up actually. Um, we have one in Warren County, Jefferson County, and Richmond County the next three Saturdays. So we'll be out there, you know, with our ba promoting backpacks and all that sort of stuff that you need to get back to school, along with testing. So yeah, we're we're out in the community. Okay, that's yeah. that's good to know. Um, 
I'm I'm to the point where I am pleased that you have brought all the information here that we need to know to the to the committee and to the public because sometimes we don't get a chance to ask these questions. And now that you have come here to ask the question and, and let the people know what's going on, I'm 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 delighted that you have took the time out to come. So I think we got another question from the floor. No question from the floor. Okay. So great information we're we're giving out to the community. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Go down to the Department of Public Health. Miss Lisa Ann, Ann Wheeler is here. She'll also pray with you. Yeah, I will do that too. Pray for you. <laughs> if they're a person of faith, absolutely. Okay, so any question that you have for breast cancer, any information you need to know about breast cancer, we didn't uh, address it here on the screen, uh, here at Barbershop Talk Live. You can also go down to the office. And what's the address to your office? 950 Laney Walker Boulevard. 950 Laney Walker Boulevard. And the website, if you need it, go to the website ecphd.com okay the central public health district okay and all ephd and, and i think we have all of the information for the breast cancer uh diabetes screening, screening. yeah that's another thing people don't know we have a diabetes clinic we have a okay. hypertension clinic okay those are so important and of course you know when i say tell someone that i work for the department of public health they're like oh you just do stds well we do test and treat and it's very important because the numbers in this area are through the roof did you know that Somebody, oh. Are you referring to the STDs? Referring to STDs, the numbers are, it's unbelievable right now. Mm -hmm. So are you are you telling us we need to practice safe sex? Mm-hmm. Along with getting- That too, that too. <laughs> but I was saying, and, and, and testing, you know, just, we're there. Walk-ins, you can walk in the morning. And and yes. And that was my next question for us, do it, it had to be an appointment, we just come in? For immunizations, STD testing, you do not need an appointment. It's first come, first serve with a walk-in. Okay. Um, we Our doors open at Laney Walker Boulevard at uh, uh, 7.30. Start seeing patients at 8, 8 okay. to 5. We do take a break for an hour at lunch. Okay. Okay. Those are the ones that don't need an appointment. Just come on in, mm -hmm. get your tests, get your results. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. Now, is there any it's other... It's important to know your status you, uh, for all things. You need to know your status. Yes. You need to know your status. And project impact. Yes. HIV testing. HIV testing. Hugely important. Know your status. Know your status. And do you know that we actually treat? We, so there's four components to project impact. We do testing, prevention, which is with PrEP, treatment, and we have wraparound services. So if a, a patient is under care for, treat, for treatment, we will help them with housing, transportation, food, all sorts of things. It's ama Their program's amazing. That's the wraparound service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. CSRA, you have been enlightened and you've been educated on a lot of information for breast cancer, uh, all the different things that's up under the umbrella at Department of Public Health. Please, ma'am, please, sir, take heed to all those informations, all those websites, all those locations. Know your status. Mm -hmm. know if you, you have know any needs, any needs that you can think of, please call me. I can connect you to, to whoever. You know, I mean, I'll try my best to, yes, because I know there is a lot of need out there, and I am available. The health department is there for you, so just check in. Okay, okay. All right, well, now, as you know, well, as you know, Lisa, when you come on Barbershop Talk Live, I have to always give away something. Okay. Something has to be given away. And, oh, now, listen, now, before I give away something, I have been, you have done such a great job. You have done such awesome. a great job, but 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 the great job also comes with a challenge. Okay. It comes with a challenge. So Lisa, this right here is what I call the challenge flag. All right. So ninety nine point nine with it's nine, so feminine yes, for it's, challenge flag. It's, that's, it's beautiful. This yeah. light. So ninety nine point nine percent of the people that come into this chair gets a challenge. Okay. So you are going to be challenged. Now the only way I can give you the challenge, I have to drop the flag. Okay. So when I drop the flag, the challenge has to be set, and you have to meet the challenge. Okay. Are you ready for the challenge? I am. You sure you're ready for the challenge? Sure am. It's going to be hard and difficult. That's all right. You ready? Sure. I just dropped the flag, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Now, you have been challenged. You have been challenged to continue to be the best worker at the Department of Public Health to make sure that people in the CSRA are getting the best treatment. <laughs> you have to continue yeah. to make sure your phone lines are open where all calls come in. You answer each and every call to make sure those persons on the other line are getting the right information the right treatment, you also gonna be challenged to make sure when the people are at their worst, when the people are at their worst and they need someone just to talk to, just to comfort them during their trying times, you are challenging, you are being challenged to continue to support them, give them the best treatment and pray for them. Absolutely. Keep the emotionals, keep everything, that's your challenge. Mm -hmm. Thank now, you, Lisa, I accept it. Now listen, if you can't live up to that challenge, I'll pick up the flag. 
I can live up to that. You live up to that challenge? Oh, absolutely. Now, one more challenge. I do it every day. You do it every day? Every day. So it's I'm already, not, it's I'm not, already not, living this you challenge. Already so. living. Yeah, I'm living it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's an easy challenge. Yeah. So I, I thank you for taking care of the challenge. Now, also, even though you've been challenged, I need to see the challenge. The people need to see the challenge. So not only do it, but let people see that you are living up to that challenge, that you have been challenged on Barbershop Talk Live. Absolutely. To continue serving the CSRA, mm -hmm. no matter what. That's your challenge. Yeah, I got it. You got it? All good. All right, now, yeah. now, now that being said, we got to give away something. Okay. I got to give away something. That's always fun. I got to give away something, now, Lisa. Okay. See, um, I have, there's two ways to win something on Barbershop Talk Live. The first way you have to do, we have to answer the first question and answer the second question. So everyone that pays attention to the conversation that we had on Barbershop Talk Live, they have a, Ooh, they have that's a chance. Good. They got a chance to win mm -hmm. it. So they had to pay attention to almost every word that you said, almost every word that I said. Right. And if you know the questions, to the, know the answer to the question, get those two questions right, you win the prize. Just that simple. Awesome. Now I'm going to come out with a prize. Here we go, Lisa. You see this big old bag we got here? Yeah. This big old pretty bag. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, look at that. I'm talking about, I'll, look, you, hold Lovely. the bag. Hold the bag, Lisa. Matter of fact, it's big, awful light. Look, let, let them see what's in the bag. Let them see what's in the bag. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. That's a surprise also. Don't let them see it. But what we're going to do, we're going to get these two questions out. Okay. We're going to get these two questions out. The first question, CSRA, the first question is, where is Miss Lisa Ann Wheeler originally from? That's an easy one. You should have been paying attention to the. You should have been paying attention to the conversation. You got the question right. But don't wait. We got two questions. Okay. That's the first question. The first okay. question is always easy. The first question again: Where is Lisa Ann Will originally from? She came a long way to come mm -hmm. down south. The next question is: If you paid attention, you know the answer. If you paid attention, if you paid attention, the next question is: What is her husband's name? Ooh. Ooh, those are good ones. What is her husband's name? Remember, he's at the house cooking. That's right. He just left barbershop talking. Yep. <laughs> he's on the way home cooking sausages and chicken and macaroni and cheese now. Right. So the next question is, what is her husband's name? Two questions. You know the question. You know the answer to the question. Put the question on the screen, please, ma'am. Please, sir. The first person to get the question right will get this big old pretty bag. That's so cool. Just that simple. Yeah. Pay attention to the question. Pay attention to the conversation. You got a prize. Again, the first question is, where is she originally from? The second question is, what is her husband's name? You did tell us his name, right? Yeah, I did. You, you did. You had to be paying attention. But listen, next week's guest right here on Barbershop Talk Live, right here in the hot seat, my good friend Fred Gibbons. Tune in, please, man. Please, sir. It's going to be another great conversation on Barbershop Talk Live. Right here, Barbershop Talk Live, Jay's Place Barbershop. To all my sponsors, Beverly's Body Butter, Demetrius Johnson, Whip, Senate Shea Butter. Also, Natanya Tillman, 1028 Broad Street. Don't forget about her right there on Broad Street. And my good friend, Alan Odom, with Palm Maintenance of Augusta, tree removal, demolition, even getting your grass cut. Please, man, please, sir, don't forget about September the 10th, right here at 2340 Millersville Road, the old YMC Soccer Field, Barber and Beauty Fun Day. The Barber and Beauty Fun Day is going to be a day of fun. I'm talking about the sun going to shine, the DJ going to play music, the band going to sing. I might sing. So come on out to the Barber and Beauty Fun Day. Let's have a good time. September the 10th, which is Sunday, without the church. Let's have some fun. Do we have an answer to the question? Do we have any answer to the question? Did anybody get the question right? Where is she originally from? And what is her husband's name? You got the question right. This bag belongs to you. This bag belongs to you. No question, no answer yet, but don't worry about it. We can also go back and check the screens later today to see who had the question right now. Again, Miss Lisa, any other information you want to spread to the people, any websites, any hours, anything, any upcoming events you want to give the people again about, about your service and what you provide to the community? Sure. Just, just a reminder that uh, you can reach me at 706-513-1033. Please come to the health department. Give us a call. We offer so many programs. We are there for you. Immunizations, testing. Uh, my program, the Breast and Cervical Cancer Screening Program, uh, just a, a nod again to the cancer support group that we have the third Monday of every month at the Elks Lodge at 6 o'clock. We provide dinner, so please join us there. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Again, please, ma'am, please uh, take horse's heed. Mouth. Take heed to all those announcements and the old folks say govern yourselves accordingly because you have been informed, you have been enlightened. So please, ma'am, please, sir, breast cancer is a serious mm -hmm. cancer. It's a serious disease that's plaguing the community, every community, but definitely in the African-American community. So get tested, know your status, get tested, know your status. I can't make, make more emphasis on it. Absolutely. So please, ma'am, Get your do mammograms. Get your mammograms. Do if you it. don't have insurance, Please reach out to me. We will get that mammogram for you. 
Just that simple. Now listen, right here on Barbershop Talk Live, all I'm going to say now, if it's on your mind, let's talk about it. If it's on your mind, come in the hot seat. We're going to talk about it. Right now, I got to get out of here. Alicia, you ready to get out of here? I am. Re- I have now. dinner waiting for me. <laughs> yes, he's cooking. That's but right. the, but you can't leave yet. You got to leave a certain way. Oh, all right. There's a certain way we get out of here. That because, like fry out on a broom or something? Yeah, we, got, <laughs> we, got a, we got a special way to get out of here. We call it getting out of here. We call it rock out of here. Okay. So we're going to rock out of here. So I want you to, I want you to give me that bag. I want you to give me that bag. Now, don't forget, now, you've been challenged. Your challenge is still standing. Take care of the people in the CSRA. Absolutely. Right here on Harrisburg, every area of the CSRA. Make sure you keep that challenge up. Meet the challenge. But right now, we're going to get out of here a certain way. You ready to rock out of here? I am. We're going to ready to rock out. I now, am. The way we rock out, Lisa, it depends on the DJ. Oh. It depends on the DJ. So I don't know what DJ J. Will is going to give us, but whatever he give us. That's how we rock out here. Okay. So we can rock out sitting up, standing up, slouching down. We, but we just going to rock out here. So you ready to rock out here? Oh. You ready to rock? I am. Let's rock. You ready? You know what Mr. James from the health department says? For a white girl, I can dance. You're white? Yeah. You're not white, are you? <laughs> like, is that a compliment, Mr. James? He's like, yeah, it is. Well, well, let's rock out here. All right. All right. All right. And now we're live. Yes, live from James Place, and we're talking. Barbershop Talk. Yes, Barbershop Talk, where nothing is off limits and everything's on the table. Everything's on the table. Barbershop Talk. 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 And James Prince. Barbershop talk. 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 And James Prince. Barbershop talk. Everything's on the table.